Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Rotobola Radio's Waiver Wire series. I'm your host, Anthony Aniano. Happy to be with you here as we take a look at the waiver wire for some hitters available for week 12 of your fantasy baseball season, the week beginning Monday, June 27th. Folks, don't forget to win big in 2022 with Rotobola.com's MLB and DFS Premium Pass, which includes 15 exclusive lineup tools daily DFS cheat sheets, and our new Team Sync platform. Use Rotobola's exclusive hitter projections, pitching planners, DFS value plays, research stations, lineup optimizer, and more to help you win big. For a limited time, get your MLB Premium Pass for an extra 10% off using the discount code ACES. Visit Rotobola.com, sign up today, start Rotoballing, like a boss. And anybody out there playing fantasy football, Rotoballer's fantasy football section is up, running, and terrific as always. Make sure you sign up there for that NFL premium pass. Get the draft guide and all the great content there at Rotoballer.com. Again, same promo code ACES saves you money at checkout. All right, everybody. Week 12, the week beginning June 27th, and we have some hitters to take a look at on the waiver wire as we approach the end of June Getting ready for the start of July and uh, 4th of July weekend, checkpoint number two for me, for my fantasy baseball team. And I always throw a catcher at you. Again, reminder of recording this on Friday, the 24th of June, before the games kick off Friday night. As always, Yahoo roster ship is what I use as my talking point. Try to keep it at or about or below 40% roster percentage uh, for for this conversation. And Start behind the plate, always throw a catcher at you. And Jorge Alfaro, former Marlin, now San Diego Padre. Catcher, outfield eligible, which is a nice little treat. Only 18% rostered and quietly having a nice season and hot over the last 14 days where he's hitting 333. Three home runs, seven RBIs, and six runs scored over those last 14 days. Interesting, sometimes he hits fourth, sometimes he hits seventh, depending on what the lineup calls for, whatever the pitcher matchup is. But on the season now, he's hitting 288 with an 816 OPS, one of the highest OPSs of anybody on my list today. So be mindful of that. Six homers, 19 RBIs, 18 runs scored on the season for Alfaro, that 324 on base percentage. This is a guy who in 2019 for the Marlins hit 262 with 18 home runs and 57 RBIs. And let's be honest, we take that out of any catcher right now in a fantasy baseball league. So Alfaro, 18% rostered, is my catcher ad of the week. At the corner infield position, we're first base heavy this week. Okay, starts with Nathaniel Lowe of the Texas Rangers. Uh, 38% rostered. Over the last 14 days, hitting 286. Three homers, eight RBIs, eight runs scored. Hitting 60 usually. In that Texas Rangers batting order. Average for the season now up to 274 with a 320 on base percentage. OPS sits at 755 and he's hitting for power, driving in runs at a decent clip. Nine home runs, 28 RBIs, kind of on the same pace he was last year where he hit 18 homers and drove in 72. Jesus Aguilar of the Miami Marlins. We know what he can do when he gets hot. Off the COVID list and came off the COVID list, swinging a pretty hot bat. 333, three homers, seven RBIs, seven runs scored since his return over the last 14 days, hitting fifth in that Miami lineup. Okay, on the season now, he's up to nine homers and 31 RBIs. This is a guy who last year drove in 93 while hitting 22 home runs and hitting 261, which is the exact same batting average he currently has on the season, a 743. OPS with a 312 on base percentage. Again, these are players who can help with some pop, drive in some runs, hitting in the middle of their team's lineup. Now, speaking of pop, my final ad at the corner infield first base position, Christian Walker of the Arizona Diamondback. Now, the highest percentage player on my list today, 43%. And I'll be honest, I guess it kind of caught me sleeping that Christian Walker is up to 19 home runs on the season. I kind of put in my rear, where did this come from? But now, 19 home runs and only 43% rostered. 37 RBIs on the year, 31 runs scored. Now, the problem with Christian Walker, he's only hitting 208 on the year. 
Although that batting average has been better over the last 14 days, over that span, he's been hitting 244 with four of his 19 home runs. Hits fourth in that Arizona lineup. The batting average could drag you down a bit. I acknowledge that. But it's tough to keep 19 home runs on the waiver wire. And currently, in Yahoo Leagues, he is on the waiver wire in 57% of leagues. He's on a pace to beat his career highs, which were in 2019 when he hit 29 homers and drove in 73. You're looking at potential 30 home run year with 80 or more RBIs for Christian Walker. The question is, does he get at least hot enough to finish 225-230 if he does that? You're in good shape with Walker going forward. Okay, middle infield options. The Ozzie Albies injury continues to hurt. Hopefully you were able to get an O'Neill Cruz or someone like that. But if you missed out, the direct replacement in Atlanta is Orlando Arcea. Former Brewer top prospect. Goes to Atlanta as a utility role type of situation. But now thrust kind of every day for the Atlanta Braves at second base. Hitting 6-7-8 in that brave lineup. But the key word there, he's hitting. Over the last 14 days, he's hitting 375. Two homers, five RBIs, four runs scored, and he's only 21% rostered. His average for the year now sits at 329. His on-base percentage sits at 389. And his OPS, 895. There's your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Highest OPS of anybody on my list today. 13 RBIs, three, three homers for the year. And he's going to play second base for the foreseeable future for the Atlanta Braves. He's also outfield eligible. But if you need a middle infield option, our seer is there and currently producing. Deep dive for a middle infield option. Take a look at Chicago White Sox, second base shortstop eligible, Lennon Sosa. Only 10% rostered. And Daniel Mendick out uh, knee injury, Sosa may be in a platoon situation. Okay, only one at bat at the big league level at the time I recorded this, but he completely raked down at double A this year before getting called up. At the double A level, hit 331 with a 384 on base percentage. His OPS, 933, with 14 homers, 48 RBIs, and 14 runs scored. If Sosa hits, he will play every day with Mendick out. Remember, Yon Mankat is out. Jake Berger, we talked about him over and over again the last couple of weeks. Okay, but Sosa in a position to play every day if he comes up and swings that hot bat that he was swinging down at Triple A. Must add in AL only leagues and deeper leagues and be mindful of them in your 12 teamers. Outfield eligible players. We start with the veteran, the former MVP, Andrew McCutcheon of the Milwaukee Brewers. Only 13% rostered. But red hot over his last 14 days, hitting 357. Two homers, five RBIs, 11 runs scored, and two stolen bases, hitting right smack in the middle of the Milwaukee lineup, batting fourth. He's up to 247 on the season, five homers, five steals, 27 RBIs. This is a guy last year, although he had 222, did hit 27 homers, drive in 80, and steal six bases on pace to exceed that stolen base total from last year. If you want younger outfielders, I got a couple of them here. We start with Alec Thomas, the Arizona Diamondback young phenom, one of their top prospects. I talked about him a few weeks ago when he first got called up. Hopefully you listened because he's only 24% roster, but red hot of late. Over the last 14 days, Alec Thomas is hitting 348, home run, four RBIs, nine runs scored, and running with three stolen bases. Okay. On the season now, batting average is up to 275, flashing some power and speed. Six home runs, four RBIs, 15 runs scored, 24, uh, 24 runs scored, 15 RBIs on the season. Hitting anywhere from first, occasionally to drop him down to seventh, depending upon the matchup. But I have Alec Thomas in a few spots, and he's kind of stayed in my lineup at this point. Uh, he's been consistent for me, showing some pop, hitting the ball consistently, uh, Sneaking in a stolen base or two, and only 24% rostered. Another outfield eligible, but also first base. And if you need a third baseman, third base eligible. Makes him corner infield. Juan Yepes of the St. Louis Cardinals. Tyler O'Neill back on the injured list for the Cardinals. So at bats available now for Juan Yepes. Over the last 14 days, 357. Two homers, seven RBIs, three runs scored. And when he plays, he bats four, five, or six in that St. Louis lineup. 
He's up to 279 on the season for St. Louis with a 786 OPS. Six homers, 18 RBIs, scorching hot. And finally, he's a bit of a one-trick pony, but if you need batting average help, you can't ignore Jonathan Diaz of the Colorado Rockies. 4% rostered, and there's not much there. He's scoring runs. He bats leadoff mostly for the Rockies. So he's got 27 runs scored on the year. On the year, though, he's batting 320. Over the last 14 days, he's hitting 304. Now, he's not going to hit home runs. He's not going to steal you bases. He is really one and a half tricks. He's bad, high batting average, score you some runs. On base percentage on the year, 375. So all of those numbers are great. Last season, he hit 282 with a 355. Uh, on base percentage. The question becomes, how does the Rockies lineup shake out once Chris Bryant returns? Connor Joe, Charlie Blackman, uh, the infield situation with Brendan Rodgers, Ryan McMahon, and everybody, all the moving parts there. So let's see what happens and where Jonathan Diaz ends up once Chris Bryant returns from the injured list. But he is batting leadoff and he is hitting 320. So kind of forcing his way into the everyday lineup is Jonathan Diaz. Okay, catcher Jorge Alfaro. Corner infielders, really first base, uh, Nathaniel Lowe, Jesus Aguilar, Christian Walker, all provide power and run producing numbers. Okay, middle infield, high batting average potential guys, Orlando Garcia, batting average and power potential in Lennon Sosa. Outfielders, Andrew McCutcheon with some power, Alec Thomas with some power and some speed, Juan Yipes gives you batting average and power. Jonathan Diaz gives you batting average as well. And don't forget, Yip is also first base, third base eligible as well. All right, everybody, make sure you like and subscribe right here to the Rotoballer YouTube channel. Make sure you download the Rotoballer app, help you through the baseball season, get you ready for football season, whatever it is you are looking for. Follow me on Twitter at Fantasy. okay? And we will see you next time right here on Rotoballer Radio. Have a good one, folks.